So we've got a question here, we need to find the mean of the Pareto distribution. And we're going to find the mean by way of integration. So first of all, the Pareto distribution, we've got a PDF, which is a probability density function, which is given as uh, f of x is beta divided by x times beta plus 1. Now, x is our random variable, so that gives us a value for our x, and x is greater than 1. So basically x goes from 1 to infinity. So support of x is 1 to infinity. Notice it's uh, the set here which is larger than 1. So we're not using a square bracket because 1 is not included. And the other parameter we have given is that beta is also greater than 1. OK, so let's find the mean. So the mean, which is given as Greek letter mu, we can say that this is also the expectation of our random variable x. Now, if we're going to use integration to find this, we can use this formula. So A and B is the range of the support of this distribution. And then we multiply it by x, i.e. what is in this bracket here, and multiply it by the PDF. So in this case, I'm just going to write f of x. But f of x is our PDF. So whatever the PDF is, we're just going to put in for this function. And then integrate with regards to x. So now we know this, and we've got this information. This is now a simple integration question. So now we're going to put in our values here. So A to B, A is the lower parameter, B is the upper parameter. So we've got 1 and infinity. And X, which is our random variable. And then for F of X, we can just plug in our function. And then don't forget the dx with regards to x. Okay, now I'm just going to just rewrite this a little bit to help us integrate it. The beta is not included in the x, so we could bring this out. This beta here has to stay in because it's a power of x. So let's just rewrite that. So now we've got from 1 to infinity. The beta I'm going to bring out front. It's in the top here and it's not connected to any powers, so that's fully legit. So we've got the beta. Then we've got x in the numerator. And now I'm just going to break this apart here just to help us here, just to simplify this bit off. So we've got x to the beta and we can just write x to the power of 1, so that's that's just the same as writing x to the beta plus 1. That's just the laws of indices. That's where we're fully within our rights to write that. And then we can write dx. So now that's giving me a way now. I can simplify this even further. This x and this x will now cancel. That'll just give me with a x to the beta in the denominator. And these x's cancel out, leaving a 1 in the numerator. So let's just go one step at a time. Oh, so now the integral from one to infinity, and then we've got one over x to the beta with regards to x. Okay, now we're almost ready to integrate. Now to integrate this, I try not to work with uh, a fraction if I can help it. What I could do is I could rewrite this as x to the negative beta, bring that up into the numerator, and then my denominator just becomes 1. So I can rewrite this now, 1 to infinity. My beta will stay out front. And now I'm just going to write x to the minus beta 
DX. So that takes care of all of that. So now I'm going to integrate and I'm just going to bring my integration result up here. So I'm just going to box this off here just to avoid any mixing up with all that. So x to the minus beta, so int integration using just the power rule. So no, we know that beta is just a constant multiple. We don't know what it is other than the fact that it's greater than one. So to integrate using the power rule, we can just add one to this and then divide by the new power and not forgetting this beta. So now straight integration result, I can just write my beta here. I'm going to use square brackets and then x to the minus beta becomes x to the minus beta plus one and then divide by this new power and that becomes my solution for my integral and then calculated over these parameters. So that's my solution so far for my integral. That's the actual answer to the integration. So now to be the definite integral, I need to calculate from one to infinity. Okay, so next line, I'm just gonna rewrite these a little bit just to help me. So my beta will stay. Now I'm gonna write this as one minus beta and the same in the denominator. So x to the one minus beta over one minus beta from one to infinity. So that takes care of that. So now I'm just going to plug in my values now for the x. So x is now one and infinity. So x at infinity and then subtract when x is one. Now we've still got a little bit of work to do here uh, to get the solution to this because it's still not quite straightforward. Now one minus beta, that doesn't involve x. So I could bring that out front and then I'm just left with x to the one minus beta. So let's do that first. So beta over one minus beta. And now my two results of when x is one or infinity. So that takes care of that and that. So now I'm only interested in this bit in my numerator. So x to the one minus beta. Now what happens when x is infinity? So let's just write that up in here. Let's just imagine that x, so I won't write equals infinity, that's just bad mathematical grammar. I'm just gonna write x approaching infinity. So I'm now gonna get infinity to the one minus beta. Okay, now that looks like a crazy expression there. But what I could write that down as, as beta is greater than one, we know that this here is going to be a negative number. So for example, if beta is two or beta is three, just write these down as examples. So when beta is two, so I've got infinity to the minus one. So I've got one over infinity. And if beta is three, I've got one over infinity uh, squared. Now, whichever way, whichever value of this indice with the infinity, this here is going to be zero. So one over infinity in limits, uh, if we're going to take the limit, this is going to approach zero. And this one here is also going to approach zero. So our first value when x is infinity is zero. And now we're going to subtract a value for when x is one. So get my minus sign in there ready. So now what we're looking at is x to the one minus beta, which is now going to be one to the one minus beta where we've got the one in. So now let's just box this off. We've done with that. So now when x equals one, so that's the exact value that we need. So now we've got one to the one minus beta. Okay, now one to the power of anything is still going to be one. So if beta is, for example, three here, let's just use that example. We've got one over, so beta is three, so that's minus two. 
So 1 over 1 squared. So that's still going to be 1. OK, so beta to the 1 minus beta, 0 minus 1. OK, so now we're well there. We nearly got our solution. So now we've got minus 1 in here, beta, 1 minus beta. So we could write this now as minus beta over 1 minus beta. This is our expected value of x from our formula here. But we can make this look a little bit more, uh, uh, what's the word, complete. We could do, get this minus sign and multiply the top and bottom by minus 1. So now we'll have beta over beta minus 1 is our expected value of x. And that's a lot neater to look at. And that is the solution. Okay.